Winter's Heart begins with Siane Harriman, a Aes Sedai of the White Aja, hunting down the Black Aja in the White Tower. Elida gave Siane the task of finding the Black Aja in the White Tower, and so far she has recruited a small group of Aes Sedai that she trusts to help her with the task. When they begin to use the Oath Rod to swear that they're not Black Aja, Talene Minley of the Green Aja refuses to do so, so Siane and her group of Aes Sedai put her on the Chair of Remorse, which is a Terangrial that makes the person sitting on it experience the possible consequences of their crimes. After Talene is forced to sit on the chair three times, she finally breaks down and admits to being a member of the Black Aja. Perrin Ivara is in Gildan, trying to take the Prophet Masima to Rand. Perrin wanted to use gateways to travel faster, but Masima refuses to use anything that involves the One Power, because he believes that the Dragon Reborn should be the only person that uses the One Power, so now they have to ride all the way instead. When Perrin arrives at his camp, Berlin informs him that Faio, Aleandre, and Maiden were taken by the Shadow Aio. Perrin goes into shock and he decides to put everything aside and fully focus on rescuing his wife. Masima offers to help him look for Fa'il and Perrin reluctantly agrees, even though he has heard that Masima thinks that he is a dark friend because of his yellow eyes. When Perrin tells Masima that he will be using gateways to look for Fa'il faster, Masima changes his mind out of nowhere and accepts to use gateways. This makes Perrin even more suspicious of Masima. Fa'il, Aleandre, and Morghese are having a very hard time with the Shido. They have been made Gaishan, and after walking for several days in the cold, they can no longer walk, so the Shido Wise Ones send an Aes Sedai that was also captured to go heal them. The Aes Sedai is named Galena, and after she learns that Fa'il is married to Perrin Ivara, who is a friend of the Dragon Reborn, she begins to blackmail Fa'il. Galena orders her to steal the Oath Rod that a wise one named Therava has, because Galena was forced to swear to obey the Shadow Wise Ones using the Oath Rod, so now she needs it to free herself from it. Fa'il has no other choice but to accept. Meanwhile, in the Black Tower, the two Aes Sedai that Loghain bonded in the previous book decide to make the most of their situation and they begin to learn everything they can about the Black Tower. One of them starts sleeping with Loghain and she learns from him that the Black Tower is divided into two factions. One faction follows Masram Taim and the other follows Loghain. The Aes Sedai then start planning on how to use the Black Tower's current situation to aid the White Tower. We then go over to Matt Cawthon. Matt, Tom and Oliver are still trapped in Ebudar because the Sun Chan took over the city and they're not letting anyone leave. Bal and Luca and his menagerie are also in the city and Luca is in good terms with the Sun Chan because he kept one of their creatures safe in his menagerie after the Battle of Falma. Matt plans on using the menagerie to escape, but Valen Luca is asking for a very high price to help him. Aludra is traveling with Valen Luca, and Matt keeps trying to convince her to tell him the secret to making fireworks, but Aludra refuses to do so. On his way back to the palace, Matt is attacked by the golem, and he uses his foxhead medallion to hurt it. An old man shows up to help him and together they manage to drive the golem away. The old man introduces himself as Noel Cherin and the two become good friends. When Matt returns to the palace, he comes across Queen Tylen, who he's still having relations with and High Lady Suroth who is in charge of the Sunchan in Ebudar. There's also a new person that Matt has never seen before and her name is Tuan and she seems to have even more command than High Lady Suroth because Suroth seems afraid of her. Tuan is very interested in Matt and she even offers to buy him from Queen Tylen, but Tylen tells her that he is a free man so she can't buy him. The next day, Matt goes to the inn he used to stay at and he speaks to Satel Anan, the innkeeper that introduced Elaine and Ainiv to the kin. She tells Matt 
that she's hiding an Aes Sedai from the Sun Chan and she asks him to help her escape the city because the Sun Chan will make her the money if they capture her. Matt agrees to take her with him when he leaves Ebudar and then he spots Bel Domon at the inn. Bel Domon is with Igyanin and we last saw them at the end of book 4 when they agreed to take the male Adam that Elaine and Ainiv found in Tanchico and dispose of it in the ocean but now they seem to be working with the Sun Chan. When Matt goes back to the palace, he sees Teslin, who used to be a nice Adai of the Red Aja, but she was captured by the Sun Chan and is now a Damani. After Matt speaks to her, he learns that she and another Aes Sedai were captured, so Matt agrees to also take them with him when he escapes. He then goes to speak to Tom and Juilin and they begin to plan their escape. They decide to disguise the Aes Sedai as Soldam and Domani and then use Balin Luka's menagerie to escape. When he goes to inform Teslin about his plan, he is stopped by Bel Domon and Egyanin. Domon recognizes Matt and Tom from when he helped them escape Shadow Logoth in Book 1. Matt tells him that he is leaving Ebudar and Domon tells him that he and Egyanin also want to leave because a high ranking member of the Sun Chan thinks that Igyanin is a traitor. Matt doesn't trust Igyanin at first because she is a Sun Chan but after she tells him that she knows Tom, Elaine and Nynaeve from when she helped them in Tanchico, Matt agrees to help them but only if Igyanin agrees to disguise herself as a Soldam to which she agrees. Matt then goes to the palace to rescue the captured Aes Sedai but he is caught by Tylen and Tuon. Matt decides to tie Tylen up on her bed so that the Sun Chan don't suspect that she helped them escape and then he kidnaps Tuan. As Matt and his group are escaping, Igyanin recognizes Tuan and she tells Matt that Tuan is the heir to the Sun Chan Empire and the daughter of the Nine Moons. After hearing this, Matt remembers the three truths that the Elfin told him in Book 4, that he will die and live again he will give up half the light of the world to save the world and he will marry the daughter of the nine moons. Matt says that Tuan is his wife three times and Igyanin freaks out for some reason and tells him to stop saying that. Matt was planning on leaving Tuan in the stables but after he learns that she is his future wife, he decides to take her with him. Tuan lets Matt take her and she looks at him with a very cryptic smile. Randall Thor is at the Korean Academy going through all of the new inventions that people are making there. Min is with him and she is picking up more of Herod Fels' books because she is still trying to figure out why he was killed. After they leave the Academy, Rand reveals to Min his current plan. He tells her that he's going to cleanse the tent from Sidene. But first, he will deal with the rogue Ashaman that tried to kill him in the previous book. Elaine Trakand is in Camelin, figuring out how she will take the throne of Andor. Some of the Novo houses don't want her as queen, so she has to think of a way to convince the majority of the houses to support her claim. She orders Brigitta to form an army to defend herself against the other houses but Brigitta doesn't want that responsibility because she's never been a leader in any of her previous lives. She is then joined by Mazram Taim and they discuss the restrictions that Elaine wants to place in the Black Tower because the Black Tower is in Camelin territory. After a fierce negotiation, they come to some agreements but they are interrupted by the Wise Ones who request Elaine's presence immediately. Elaine and Avienda have asked to become first sisters which is an ideal custom so the wise ones put them through a ritual and by the end of it Elaine and Avienda become first sisters. Afterwards Elaine goes to have a meal and she is informed that an army of borderlanders is approaching Andor. As she's eating her meal she realizes that she's been drugged and she passes out. Then three assassins try to kill her but a guard named Doylin Melor defeats the assassins and he saves her life. When Elaine wakes up, she is with Nynaeve, Avienda and Brigitta. Brigitta tells her that she should have bodyguards and Elaine agrees and she decides to make Doylin Melor 
the guard that saved her life, the captain of her bodyguards. Afterwards, Elaine and Nynaeve go to meet Iwain in Telaranriad, and Iwain tells them that she will make them and every Aes Sedai not sworn to the Three Oaths to do so, but Elaine and Nynaeve tell her that they've come to the realization that the reason the kin live for so long is because they haven't sworn the Three Oaths. After hearing this, Iwain says that she still wants every Aes Sedai to swear the Three Oaths but that she will allow any Aes Sedai to free themselves from them and then let them retire into the kin. Elaine then informs them about the Borderlander army that is approaching Andor and she tells them that she will use them to secure the throne of Andor. The next day, Rand and Min appear in Camelin and Rand goes to speak to Nynaeve. He tells her that he needs her help because he's going to cleanse the taint from Sidene using the Chorankal which are the two most powerful Sa'angriel ever made. The Choran Kao were created during the War of Power to defeat the forces of the Shadow, but they were never used. One of them is located in Kyrian and it can only be used by a male channeler. The other one is in a Seafolk Island and it can only be used by a female channeler. Nynaeve agrees to help him, but before they leave, Elaine and Avienda go to speak to Rand. Elaine, Min and Avienda have agreed to share Rand and they ask him to become their warder. He tells them that it's not a good idea but he eventually accepts. Afterwards, Elaine and Rand have sex and Elaine becomes pregnant. The next day, Rand, Min, Nynaeve and Lan leave and Elaine goes back to securing the throne of Andor. She manages to get a meeting with the four Borderlander rulers that are leading an army of 200,000 soldiers and when she meets with them they tell her that they're looking for the Dragon Reborn. Elaine tells them that she will tell them where he is but only if they agree to march into Camelin within a week because she wants them to look like an invading force so that the Andorans rally behind her and she can gain more support to secure the throne of Andor. After some negotiations the Borderlanders agree and Elaine goes back to Camelin. When she returns, she is informed that four small armies are approaching Camelin, but no one knows who is leading them. Elaine immediately begins to get ready to defend her city. The Forsaken are having a meeting where they discuss Rand and his plan to cleanse the taint from Sidene. A man named Moradin has recently been made naveless, which means that he is in command of the Forsaken. Moradin tells them that Rand is going to use the Choran Cow to cleanse the taint from Sidene, so he orders the Forsaken to go to where Rand decides to use the Choran Cow and capture him and to only kill him if it's absolutely necessary. Finally, we go back to Rand. Rand is in the city of Armadding, which is a city where it's illegal to carry weapons and it has a Terangriel that prohibits the use of the One Power. Rand has been laying trails that lead to Farmatting in hopes that the four rogue Ashaman that try to kill him follow. His plan works and he manages to kill one of them and another one is killed by Padan Fane who is also in the city. Padan Fane wants to be the one that kills Randall Thor so he's trying to keep him safe until then. When Rand goes back to the inn he's staying at, he tells Min that he feels Alana's presence in the city. Later, Alana and Katswain arrive at his inn with the group of Aes Sedai and some of the Seafolk. Katswain knows that Rand is losing all emotion little by little, so her mission now is to teach Rand laughter and tears again and to do that she needs to stay close to him. Alana updates Rand on some things including the Black Tower and he sends her away on a mission. He then receives a mysterious letter from someone telling him where the rest of the rogue Ashaman are. Rand knows that this is most likely a trap but he decides to go where the letter says anyway. Rand takes Lan with him and when they arrive where the Ashaman are supposed to be they find them but they are dead. Rand realizes that they have been killed by the Shadow Logoth dagger because of their injuries and out of nowhere Pat and Fane appears and attacks them. Rand and Lan injure Pat and Fane but he manages to get away. 
Rand and Len also try to do the same because they hear the guards approaching but the guards quickly surround them and they take them to prison. The Council of Armadi figures out who Rand is and they decide to give him over to the White Tower. But after Katsuin speaks to the council, she convinces them to release him and Lan under her custody. After Rand and Lan are set free, Rand takes everyone that came with him and Katsuin away from Farmating and he tells them that he's going to cleanse the taint from Saidin using the Choran Cow. Some people in his group are reluctant to do this, but Katsuin only asks where he's planning on doing it, and Rand tells them that he's doing it in Shara Logoth. Rand's plan is to basically drive the taint in Saidin into Sharalogoth using a funnel made out of Sidar and then hope that the evil of Sharalogoth and the taint in Saidin annihilate each other. To accomplish this, Rand and Nynaeve will use the male and female Charon cow and then link with one another while everyone else defends them from the Forsaken because they know that the Forsaken will try to stop them. Rand and Nynaeve then begin the process and they channel into Sharalogoth using the Choran Cow and a black dome begins to appear on top of the city. Some of the Forsaken do appear and they try to stop them but Rand's forces are able to drive them away. After some time, the black dome above Sharalogoth collapses and the city is completely destroyed. Rand and Nynaeve are found unconscious and the Ashaman tell everyone that Rand's plan worked and Saidin is finally safe to use.